Guys, I'm going to start right up at the top. I have four, four finished objects to share with you today. You know what? I think I need to redo that entire thing. I need to redo my intro. Ugh, Christina. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Crafty Christina podcast. I'm Christina. I'm crafty. I am your host. And this is a podcast all about my knitting and crafting adventures. So if you're new, welcome in. If you're returning, welcome back. I know it has been a while. Happy summer. I'm pretty sure this is episode 14. Um, today is Friday. June 23rd, a little bit after 11 a.m., I am coming to you from Western Pennsylvania, where I am thriving in the summer weather. So I hope you're enjoying your summer so far. I have so many things to share today. Um, I've got some finished objects. I've got some whips that are also going to be new cast-ons for you. Um, I've got a couple of new acquisitions to share. I've got a stash update to share. I've also got some exciting announcements to share today. So grab your knitting, grab a snack, grab a drink, whatever you need. Grab your crafts, settle in to wherever you want to be cozy and comfy, and let's get into it. All right, you guys, I am going to start right up at the top with finished objects. And I have four to share with you. And the first, I think, is the one that I'm most excited about. So I'm going to start with it. And that is my Trunk Island Tank by Beth McDonald Stone. She is finished, you guys. Look how cute she is. I think this is probably one of my favorite things I've ever knit. Um, I have so much to say about it. This knit was such a journey for me. I learned some things. I enjoyed so many things. Um, I had some learning curves. I don't even know where to begin. I'm pretty sure I started this back in February. This is just like a super cutie tank knit in the round. Um, I started it back in February. So I think I finished it maybe a month ago. I have been loving wearing it around the house. I've taken it on a couple outings. It is just so soft and comfy. Um, this yarn, oh, I don't think I brought the tag, but I brought the leftovers. This yarn, well, there's a story behind the project to begin with. If you're new, I had some 2023 knitting goals. So I'm gonna link that video up here. This is the first video of mine that you're watching. Go check it out because it's related to all the things that I'm talking about in my podcast this year. If you're returning and you've seen that video, or if you haven't, make sure you watch it. I am really keeping up on a lot of my goals. And this tank was something that I really wanted to knit this year. And guess what? She done. Um, I am working through my stash this year as most of you probably know, and not to eliminate it, just to use it because we love it and we've got it and I'm trying to buy a house. One of the skeins of yarn that I had in my stash was something that I picked up from the, I always forget what it's called, Seal Valley Yarn Crawl um, in the greater Pittsburgh area, which is where I'm from. I picked it up at Yarns by Designs um, on that yarn crawl when we relocated back from Las Vegas to the Pittsburgh area. Holy cow, almost two years ago now. I was doing the yarn crawl. It was the first thing that I did when I came back. Um, and I wanted like some special unique skeins. It was like my limit for myself. I would buy like one thing I thought I really needed from every store and needed something I just really liked. And then the other thing that I would get was like a, a unique skein to the area or the store or the crawl. Um, and this is all that I have left. Um, quite a bit of a story to tell you about this yarn. Anyway, I picked up one skein of it and this tank 
was on display and it said you could knit one, like you could knit up to the size two. I knit the size two um, of the Trunk Island Tank by Beth McDonald Stone with one skein of that yarn. So I picked it up and I was like, I love it. So cute. I'm going to knit that tank. And so I had it like in the back of my mind that I'd get to it someday. Um, well, someday is here and now she's done as you know, and I, um, I just really wanted to knit it. So I knit the size two and you guys, I think I have better details on my Ravelry project page. So I'll link that in the description. Everything that I talk about, I've been really making an effort to um, keep my Ravelry project notes updated and as descriptive as possible. Descriptive? Specific? I want all the details there. I've had a lot of fun the last six months working through my projects and like looking through people's notes on Ravelry and there are so many things that have helped me in other projects notes. So. I'm striving to be helpful too. So if you want to know the details, you want to know some like things more in depth, be sure to check out my project pages. I'm keeping them all up to date. I've got the Ravelry app on my phone now. Um, and all the details about this tank are here. Two things I did differently. One, I did not do a gauge swatch, which is pretty much unlike me when I'm doing anything because I want my gauge to be accurate. I did not gauge swatch for this and I also used a needle I think I went a needle size down from what the pattern called for because I saw a project note coming full circle that somebody started on um, the the tank without swatching and then check their gauge a couple like rows in and then they were able to adjust from there and you couldn't tell so I like the idea of that but then once I started working my gauge was a little bit off but I really loved the fabric that I was getting so I just decided I was going to just keep swimming and keep on knitting um and I got to The first strap of this and the body was not as long so you knit in the round knit the strap anyway basically I made an oopsie and I had to correct it so I uh, I ran out of yarn and so I reached out to Jody of Flower Hill fleeces and I'm like hey is there any more yarn of this and she was like yes go check the shop um, there's some skeins there so did I say that this is a Flower Hill fleece skein it's a DK weight the colorway is Aquagani 2.0. I've worked with, this is the second time I've worked with Jody's yarn and it is just delicious. Um, I love the colorways. Um, I, I don't know. I just really enjoy it. And so when I'm buying more yarn in the future, I'm really excited to buy more of hers. Anyway, lots to say, but whoa. Anyway, basically I had to get a second skein of this yarn because my gauge was incorrect. Um, I did still knit the size two. I think the fit is really great. Um, I ended up having to frog back one of these straps and fade in this yarn. So I knit the body a little bit longer, which I think in hindsight, I probably will knit this again. And when I do, I think the pattern calls for 13 inches of body before you split for the straps. Um, and well, like or until desired length. I was worried about running out of yarn. So again, so I stopped at the 13. Um, I also blocked halfway when I was playing yarn chicken, which is something I never did before in my life. So <clears throat> I learned a lot of things. Um, this was a really experimental like garment piece. It fits fantastically. I'm actually not going to try it on, but I did a try on in my last wedding knit week video. I just posted a vlog when you're seeing this probably two weeks ago. From today so from the day that this goes up so I'll link it somewhere up here for you and in the description so if you want to see it try it on or if you missed that video go watch it um, I do try it on and I talk about like my trials a little more there but basically I faded in the skein and I used um, a method that was in a video by Professor Pearl um, it was like a lazy girl's guide to fading in a color or like knitting with two colors. I don't know. I really liked it. Um, I would definitely use that again. I'm glad I learned it because I would like to continue knitting some things with any dyed yarn, especially sweaters. And, and now like I've, I've discovered like a newfound love for garment knitting. So I will definitely use it in the future. It was really helpful. It was super easy. And 
I'm a little bit of a lazy girl um, who doesn't want to do helical knitting. So I'll also link that video in the description for you. But basically, I loved it. It's done. I will knit the body again, probably 15 or 16 inches. I would just, if it, it, it sits well, I'd like it to be just a tiny bit longer. It sits like right above my hip. So, um, yeah, I'm mean, knit four straps and then it's got like these really long straps you tie into bows. So the tying the bows was the hardest part of the whole thing. And I don't want to untie them because I have them where I like them. So anyway, that is that. Um, I really love it. I have talked about that for like 10 minutes. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I had to use a second skein, but I have, I don't know how many grams. I actually bought a new pocket scale. The one that I was using was really... It was like on balance, there was something wrong with it and I couldn't fix it. So let me see how many grams I have left. So I used, this is telling me I have 27 grams, a little over 27 grams left. So I had two 100 gram DK weight skeins. So what is that like 170 grams ish. So I have some left. I probably couldn't lengthen the body, but anyway, that's. My first finished object. I have two others to show. Well, I have three others to show you. Um, let's see. The first, I don't think I've shown these here. I finished some more Broadway socks. So this was my March pair. I've been knitting a pair of socks is my goal. I'm a little bit behind. I'm trying really hard to catch up. I'll talk about that in a few. Um, I have been getting my Trilogy Yarn Broadway Skein Club every month for about a year and a half now. Um, knitting a pair of socks for myself every month out of them. And I started doing that in January. So I'm currently working on my fifth pair and my sixth pair. Again, show it in a minute. But I'm going to show you my third pair and my fourth pair right now. I have just been really, really enjoying this. And like my love for knitting socks is never ending. Um, if you're a sock knitter, I think you totally get it. I just, like, I was thinking about it the other day, and, like, I love knitting, but I've never knit more things in my life than socks. It's a lot of fun. And I'm always eager to cast on another pair. Like, if I don't have socks on the needles, I feel weird. Anyway, so these are my third pair. This is the colorway Wicked. And my recipe for myself, as always... Um, oh, I did change it up a little bit. I don't know if I've talked about that on a podcast yet this year. It's been a long time since I've chatted and I don't like go back and rewatch myself because that's weird. But anyway, uh, I used to do 20 rounds for the ribbing. I started doing 25 rounds for the ribbing and I'm loving it. So I'm committing to that for the foreseeable future. Um, I did 50 rounds for the leg. I do a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And then after I do the gusset decreases, I do 50 rounds and then I do a rounded toe. So I think my foot is probably somewhere around like 70 rounds after the heels finished. Um, so I finished these super cute. And then I also finished my fourth pair was inspired by the hairspray playbill. And that is these look how bright and fun these are. I have to be honest. I really was not sure of this color when I first started knitting it, I just feel like I love blue. It was just so bright. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not sure if I like this, but now that they're finished, I think they might be my favorite pair of socks I've ever knit. So again, same recipe, but I'll show you a little bit more of the close up here. And I have, again, all of the details about these socks when I started them, when I finished them um, on my Ravelry pages. And I'm making a a page for every pair of socks and with the scraps I'm knitting a blanket but I haven't worked on it so I'm not going to show it today but stay tuned in the future. So I've got my Trunk Island tank I finished. I got two pairs of socks that are finished and then a recently finished object. I'm back up on my dishcloth knitting and this is also you guys going to get us into half objects and whips and I think they're all going to be new cast-ons for you but I'm back into dishcloths really want to keep knitting my cotton yarn stash nothing really special about this 
I've made one project page for my dishcloths this year. Um, and I'm just labeling them dishcloth one, two, three, four, five. I'm writing notes about when I started them, when I finished them, how much yarn I had left, whatever. Um, I just have a stash of Lily's sugar and cream that I've had for eons. And I just wanted to knit it up. I like the dishcloths. My family likes the dishcloths. A pro tip from my dad. He loves cleaning his grill with cotton knit dishcloths. So um, any master grillers out there, if you need help, like, getting your grill clean, my dad swears by these, but he put holes in all of my mom's. So <laughs> because he used them so much. So anyway, I'm just trying to knit through my cotton stash um, dishcloths and then have, like, a nice pile in like the fall so I can start packaging them up for like holiday gifts because so many people I know love them. I'm just using this gray, really nothing special. It's grandma's favorite um, details in the pattern on my Ravelry page. So that's my last finished object, but we can go into like half objects right now. Not too exciting. Halfway through another dishcloth, I found with one skein of Lily Sugar and Cream, I can knit two dishcloths and have a little bit left over. So I'm knitting two dishcloths in full and then I'm throwing the scraps to the side. So once I get through the yarn, um, like the full skeins, I'm just going to go back to my like scrap or half skeins and then probably make some scrappy dishcloths. I haven't yet decided if that's going to be this year. I'm just going to play it by ear, but I've got half of a dishcloth on the needle. And then let's talk about... Let's, let's do my half objects. I'll do some socks. So I'm knitting more Broadway socks. And I was feeling like I wanted to switch things up just a little. So I'm going to show you. I've got two because I got a little bit behind. So it's June. I should be finishing up my sixth pair. But my February pair... I just had a busy like work season. I had a big event in March, so I wasn't knitting quite as much. And I just wasn't knitting quite as much because of my work schedule. And so um, my February pair took me into March. I started March a little late. Anyway, I'm trying to knit two pairs of socks this month. So I'm not behind. <clears throat> or so I catch up. So I started two different pairs and I wanted to switch things up a little bit. I was feeling like a little contrast heel toe cuff situation. So I'm going to show you the yarns first. And I think I did a little poll if you follow me on Instagram, on my Instagram story. And I feel like I'm a little more active over there than on YouTube because it's easy for me to post like, whoops, my day today. I think I added a poll on my Instagram story a couple weeks ago about being indecisive about picking the contrast colors for my skein. So uh, the colors that I am knitting with this month are this beautiful Broadway skein. And this is based on the prom playbill. And then I've got this, which is based on Grace. I was looking to see if I have my tag in here. This is Trilogy Yarns for Plush Base. And the 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 like the blend that I get every month is MCN four ply fingering. So it's eighty percent superwash merino, ten percent cashmere, ten percent nylon, and I get four hundred and fifty yards per hundred grams. So there's the little label for you. Um, yeah. So I have got. So I decided on this green with thanks to your help on Instagram is the contrast color for this. And I decided on this pink is the contrast color for this. So I've got one sock done of each and they are two cute, you guys, same recipe, except I did the contrast heel. And then I've started adding this detail to my toe. I think I did it on a pair of socks for the first time like last year, just for like funsies. Um, but I really like it and I think it adds a little more pizzazz than just like a, like a regular toe. So I've started adding two rounds. So when I get to the last um, four rounds on my foot before I start the toe decreases, I add in the contrast color and I've done two rows um, around and then I, I do the 
the main color for two rows and then I pick the contrast color back up and then I knit the toe. So I did that for this sock. I'll give you a close up of the yarn. I just think it's so fun. Like the little, like you can see a little better, the little flex on those, like the speckles, I just am obsessed. And then I did the same thing here. These are so fun and summery. I, the only thing, excuse me, the only thing I wish I would have done differently in hindsight was I wanted to see how the yarn was going to work up before deciding on the contrast color. In hindsight, I really wish I would have done the cuffs in the contrast color too, but I think I'm going to have enough left over. I could knit another pair in the future if I wanted, but this is the grease. Again, same 25 round ribbing, but look how cute the toe is. Like, tell me how cute this is. Add a little stripe on your toe, you guys. You're feeling a little sassy. Um, yeah, so I have half objects and my plan is to finish um, their mates. I still have yet to cast them on, but I really want to finish them. I mean, doing one sock in seven days, I think is like a good goal. And then I'm also taking, like I have some vacate, like some serious vacation time plan for the week of 4th of July. So I'm hoping that by like July 7th, maybe I'll have both socks finished and then I'll have two pairs and then I can cast on my next. And I've noticed it like on a good day, it takes me about three ish weeks to finish a pair of socks when I'm just like knitting things like I have been. So those are my half objects. Um, while I'm here talking about this, actually, I wanted to bring up a little, I don't know, some thoughts. I wanted to bring up some thoughts that I've been having about my July pair because earlier this year I said I'd be flexible myself. The new pattern came up that I really wanted to knit. I would do it. And if you've been here a while, you know, I really love West Knits designs and he just announced that he is doing a surprise sock along in July and you need a main color and a contrast color. And I'm already planning to knit socks and I've been really wanting to switch it up a little more than the just like plain Jane vanilla socks, which is why I added the contrast colors into these socks. But I was looking through my stash and I'm like, well, I've got all this Broadway yarn. I've got all this Broadway yarn that I've been wanting to use. And you know what? I'm doing, this is like a side note. I'm knitting the jigsaw puzzle blanket by West Knits as my scrappy blanket with my leftovers. And so after I started it, I went through my entire Broadway club stash and I laid out in order where I thought the colors would look nice within the blanket based on what I got in the mail at that time. I took a picture of it. It's on the project page on my Ravelry. So go look at that if you want to see like my collection as of like, maybe April. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling. I'm all over the place. I'm excited. I got lots to share. Um, anyway, I had initially decided that this colorway was going to be my July pair of socks. And this is Moulin Rouge. I'll give you like a little sneak peek because that's the order that it would have fit in my blanket at the time. I haven't worked on my blanket in a while because I'm trying to catch up on my socks. But I thought... I could look through my stash and see if I could find like a really good main color, co like contrast color type of situation to do the West Knit Surprise Sock Along and use the contrast color as one of my Broadway skeins. However, I did not have that many options. So the color that I thought would be the best out of all of my like solid tonal sort of colors that was like the biggest contrast he said contrast is like the biggest thing is this purple that I used for contrast heel toe and cuffs on a Halloween pair of socks that I made almost two years ago now yeah I think I was knitting them two summers ago 
Wow, this is Teeny Button. I don't know the base, but it was like a mystery scan I ordered. Anyway, it's like a beautiful, like dark, deep purple. Anyway, I thought this would be a fabulous main color, and I have enough of it. Um, and so I was looking through my stash to see. Basically, all I'm trying to say is I'm really undecided if I want to knit this mystery sock along or not with my July Broadway color. And like, this was my initial plan color, but I don't think these go well to get, like, I don't think they contrast enough. And I don't have something in my stash right now, and I'm not trying to buy some yarn to make it. Ugh. Hold, please. Anyway, basically, I didn't have a contrast color that was going to work well with this at all. I thought this is my best option. So I looked at all of my skeins. I guess I'm having a hard time committing to not going according to plan. I can't decide if I want to knit the knit along or not. Um, this was the best option that I came up with. <laughs> so this is based on Mean Girls, the musical. And I thought like this is a really like serious contrast, like even with the pink, like it's got a little like darkness in it, but it's not a lot. So I feel like it would just be like a little speckle. I don't know. I haven't decided. So that's something I'm thinking about. And I guess my goal is to finish the socks before that knit along starts. I think it starts on July 6th or something. I think I'm probably going to look at the spoilers if they're posted and then I'll decide if in fact I'm going to knit them. But I thought that would be a really fun way to like use a Broadway skein and do something a little different. Off the sidebar, my final whip right now that I've been actively working on is new to this podcast. But it is from my 2023 knitting goals, and it is the Scattering Petals Cowl by Dana Ray Makes. Look how cute she is. This, I had to learn how to do like a crochet provisional cast on. I hated it. It made you want to like run far away from crochet, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I bought this hook. It was the only hook that I had, so it was the hook that I used. It's a Clover E 3.5 millimeter. I don't know anything about it, but I did it. The only thing I wish I would have done is maybe used a lighter color. I don't know. This has been so addicting to knit on. I had planned to frog my Annalise wrap. Um, this year, which I did, I really wanted to use the yarns from it. It was a Kogu Painters palette, fingering weight. I'm not gonna like, this is, I'm trying to be careful so it doesn't fall out. Anyway, these are the colors. Um, I thought they were incredible and I need some more like winter wear. And I've been seeing this pattern go around for basically like I don't know I think it was released like two years ago maybe and I've been just seeing people knit it during advent season people have been working on it like all year long people have been doing scrappy and I thought it was so cute and I think this will match like some of the coats that I have so yeah I'm just doing I think a lot of people use oh I'm doing the fingering weight version and I'm going to knit the long cowl so I think I need to have 24 repeats of this um of like these six col I'm sorry 24 like rows of this is what I think it's supposed to be and of like the the pattern repeat does that make sense I feel like I'm not doing a good job at describing this um so I am already on the second round of these colors. So I think because there's six, I'll need to repeat that four times total. Four. Four times total. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I've just been really enjoying it. And I think most people, I should say most people, I think pretty much all the versions that I've seen, people have used minis. There's a DK version and then there's a fingering weight version. And it would make like a really great advent project because you just knit I don't know, I think it's maybe like 10 rows for these repeats. So a lot of people, like as they're opening advents, it's really quick, it's really easy, it's like one stripe a day. 
Um, I have a really hard time putting this down when I pick it up. I'm trying to like finish my dishcloth and I'm trying to finish these socks. So I've been like putting this to the wayside, even though it's like so potato chippy. Anyway, that's it. I had somebody comment. I posted this on my Instagram. I had somebody comment and ask me which kit this was. And I tried to look it up. I got this like two years ago. Um, and I don't have like the name of the kit. And I think I have like some of the colors. I'm really sorry. I really don't know. Let me see if it's like on here. I don't know what it is. The sticker says it's Kogu 854-10 on like one of these colors. I don't know. I don't know if that means anything. I don't know how to tell. I'm really sorry. But it's really pretty and I think you should go to her website and like check them out. You can get one yourself. They flow beautifully. Make like a really pretty project for yourself. Anyway. Scattering petals cowl. <sighs> Let me look at my list here. I don't even know what the heck I'm going to talk about. Um, mm, mm, mm. That's it, actually. For the knitting, I've got acquisitions. And then I'm going to give you a little stash update. And I'm going to talk about some announcements. And we'll be done. Exciting. Okay. Um, let's start with acquisitions. I have, I don't even know. I, I wrote down in my notes that I needed to share my April, May, and June Broadway yarn. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, I think April was shucked. Here's the playbill. And here is the yarn. It's like bright yellow and it's got like a super fun green, like, hello. I'll give you a closer look here. So bright and fun. And then I think the May skein, the sixth, the musical, which has been really popular. I missed it when it was here in Pittsburgh. But that is this. Like, I'm loving it. The gold, the purples. I mean, girl, come on. So here's a little close-up of that. So cute. And then this month came, like, two days ago. And I think this is moving up with, like, one of my favorite Broadway skeins to date was Escape to Margaritaville. You're not ready. <laughs> Look at this skein. There are so many fun colors happening in here. Like, I can't wait to knit these socks. OMG. <laughs> I mean, look how pretty. I guess this would also probably work, huh? Ugh. I don't even know if I want to pair it with anything, though too good. So that's it. That's all for my yarn. And then I guess I did get that one skein of the Flower Hill fleeces to finish my tank at some point, but it came in and then it went right out. So bah, bah, bah. I was going to give a little stash update here. April and May. Let me flip back my notebook and find it. In April, I started April with 111 skeins of yarn and in April I got one Broadway skein and then I put six skeins back into my stash because I frogged my Annalise wrap which was the scattering petals cow I just showed you so the yarn that I had come in in April got me up to 118 skeins but I went back down to 111 because I immediately started the Scattering Petals Cow with those six skeins. And then I started my Hairspray Socks in April as well. So seven came in and seven went out. So I broke even in April with 111 skeins of yarn. Then in May, I started with 111. I had two skeins come in. I brought the Flower Hill Fleeces Aquagani 2.0 in for my tank. And then I brought in six the musical Broadway yarn. That was two, so that brought me up to 113. But I ended the month at 110. 
um, because I used the Flower Hill Fleeces tank and then I cast on those two Broadway socks I just showed you. So the month of June, I am starting with 110 skeins and I will have an update for you on my June stash probably in my next video. So that's kind of it stash wise. I have two announcements to share. The first is that I am committing myself to doing a podcast every two weeks. I have found it so hard for me to get back into like the podcasting, recording, uploading, editing, the whole mix of things. I love it so much. It's so much fun for me. It's like a nice therapeutic, like it's very creative. I love it, love it, love it. But it's so hard for me to get back into that. Like I'm definitely knitting, but it's so hard for me to stay in it when I get like busy and then I take like a couple months off. I'm like, gosh, I'm like looking back at my notes. I can't remember what I talked about. I feel a little like weird. Um, and I think it's going to make things a little more consistent and be more motivated. So when you're watching this, I'm committing to doing a podcast every two weeks. Every two weeks, you're going to get an episode. Same day, same time. Really excited about that. So stay tuned. I'm going to get regular, you guys. So get ready to get regular with me. I'm getting regular schmegular. <laughs> the other thing I am going to be doing, so I guess I have three announcements. The first is regular podcast. The second is I'm going to be recording a six month update on my 2023 knitting goals. So that'll be coming sometime in July. So make sure you mark your calendars to look out for that um, to see how I'm doing. We're going to talk about my initial goals, what I've done, where I'm at, and if I'm on track, if I'm behind, if I'm ahead, and if so, how I'm going to course correct into the rest of the year. So stay tuned for that because we are at the six month mark. Now we're finishing it up and I can't wait to share and reflect on my six month progress. The final announcement that I have to share is that I have finally started a Ravelry group. So I'm going to link that down below. If you're interested, go join the Crafty Christina Ravelry community. Um, I've got three different threads in there. I've got a general like chatter thread. If you want to go over there and just like chit chat, I'm going to try and like keep up to it and like participate in it and like be around. Um, the other two are going to be related to the podcast. One of them is an oopsies thread. So if you've been here a long time, you know, we're no strangers to oopsies. We got the oopsie gusset. We got the oopsie muscleberg. We got all the oopsies in the world because we're just people. We're just learning. We're just growing and we can giggle about it together. So if you have a really funny project or an oopsie or something that you want to share, please go ahead and throw it in the oopsies thread because every time I do a podcast, I'm going to be checking that and sharing your oopsies with the Crafty Christina community so we can talk about the oopsies together, tell your little oopsie story, maybe talk about how you overcame it. Um, so if you're like me and you really screwed up a pair of socks for your mother-in-law um, and gave them to her anyway, let us know because we want to giggle along with you. And the other thing that I have in that Ravelry group is a stash knitting project thread. So if you're like me, I think there's so many people this year doing this. If you were trying to knit projects from stash only, if you need ideas, if there's projects that you're working on that really worked for you or you really loved them, if you stumble across something that you feel like would be a really good stash buster or like one or two skein pattern, I know I'm always looking for those because if you're like me, you've got like a bunch of random single skeins of like sock yarn. <laughs> post them in the thread. Let's chat about it. Let's talk about it. We can have Q and A's in there. Um, and if there are patterns in there, if there's comments in there that I think are share worthy, I will also pull those from the thread and you will have a chance to be shared on my podcast as well, because I love watching pattern videos and I get the feeling you all do too. So I'm here to share some pattern ideas here to make it a community collective. And I am just really oh so excited about it. So those are my announcements. I think honestly, you guys, that is about it for me today 
Thanks so much for stopping in, knitting with me, chatting with me, catching up, and I will see you in the next one in two weeks. Okay. Bye guys. Thank <music> you.